grew up in a house, you know, I didn't grow up in, you know, like uh, complexes or projects or anything like that, you know. Um, I grew up in a house, backyard, dog, basketball court, the whole nine yards. Um, the neighborhood, it was, uh, it wasn't low class, but it was, uh, you could say middle class, if you want to say, you know. Um, but still, it was violence in the neighborhood. It was still, violence still existed. Drugs still existed. Prostitution, you know, things of that nature existed in that neighborhood. Um, and my mom did her best to keep me away from it. She did her best to keep me in school, you know, to make sure that I did the things that I was supposed to do. But um, I think my life took a turn when my mother remarried. She remarried and um, it kind of like, we had a unit of three, my mother, my brother and I. And when he came, when, her, when she remarried and he came into that unit, it kind of like shifted things, you know? And um, I didn't like him, you know? Um, so it kind of separated our family. And my brother ended up moving out, left me behind. Um, I wanted to go live with my father because I didn't want to be in the house with him anymore. You know, my stepfather, I didn't want to be in the house with him anymore. It wasn't like he was abusing me or hurting me or anything like that. It was just like, you know, I just rejected him. I didn't like him. I just rejected him, you know. And um, my mother decided to marry him, so it was like it changed a lot in our family, you know. And I think that's where really things took a turn in life for me, where, you know, I started looking for attention, seeking attention. like. So when I left, I went home, got my gun, and I came back. When he came out of the club that night, I shot him five times, point blank range, and I murdered him. He said, I'm gonna double your life in prison and he gave me 22 years in life. Um, it was a shock for me. Like, it was like my life just drastically changed. And I ended up going to prison. Um, as soon as after I was sentenced, I went to prison. And when I went to prison, it was like I was on my own, really. It was like the reality set in for me. You understand what I'm saying? Like it became real for me because it was nobody, it was a part of my life that, you know how people, when you grow up, they teach you how to, uh, school teach you how to be a student in school, you know? Uh, your parents teach you how to, you know, do chores in the house or whatever. But nobody taught me prison. And so I go to pro board and, you know, and when I go in, it was like a, it's through a camera. You know, you watch a telecam, right? It's, it's very, it's not, no, it's no, it's hard to convey who you are through a camera. You understand what I'm saying? Especially when you're trying to be sincere. It's, it's not Right, exactly. Opposed to face to face. But, um, and when I sat in front of the camera, you know, you're in the front of a panel of three, <coughs> and the camera pans back and forth between them. And um, I think I waited for the question, why should we let you out? But it never came. It was more of a conversation of, we're gonna let you go right now. Are you ready? The world has changed. It's 2015, it's not 1990 anymore. It's cell phones, you know? The whole world is inside the palm of your hand now. This is the world now. It's gonna be inside the palm of your hand. Will that be overwhelming for you? Will that be 
something that you're ready to handle. You understand? It can, it can, it can, it can make you, it can drive you insane. So you know, and I'm like, well, I can handle. It. I think I can. You know? Well, you know, you know, you you're gonna be. You never had a job before. You, you're gonna be forced to work. Part of your stipulations when you when you get out is that you have to gain employment. Are you ready to embrace that? I'm ready to embrace that. I think I'm ready. You have to live with someone. You have to depend on someone while you out. You know, you can't think that you can make it on your own. And, and I'm thinking, yeah, all right. And that was the conversation. And when I got the paper, you know, you wait like four days after your parole hearing to get the decision if they're going to let you go or not. And at night it came. They normally have you locked in when you get your decision because if you get hit, they don't want you to hurt nobody or whatever. So it's normally after nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, the guard will come around with your paper and give it to you. So he came with me, <coughs> excuse me. So he came and gave me the paper. I said, here, so I get the paper, I opened it and I just cried, man. I was like happy, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times you have guys or women come out and you know the first thing, their first excuse for not getting a job is, well, I'm not gonna get a job because I'm a convicted felon. And so they kind of already set themselves up from fail for failure right there. Um, because one, they can get a job, Two, it's illegal for an employer not to hire them because they're a convicted felon. Um, so once they take that out of the equation and they start kind of believing in themselves and realizing that they can put the past behind them, then you start to see a vast improvement. Um, you have guys, like you said, who were away for a long time and, you know, technology's changed. Many of them don't have email or don't know how to use email. Um, this is a day and age where applying for a job is done online. Um, so you kind of need to, to know that. You need to be able to use that. You know, I think we did well because him and I both, we went on to get master's degrees. We both left prison with master's degrees, you know. And, you know, that says a lot for a person coming to prison at such a young age, you know. You ever heard the saying, is what you make it? It can make you or it can break you. I believe that's the analogy that you have to go with when you're dealing with prison because prison is what you make it. You know, prison will give you what you put into it. So if you want to put in negativity into prison, if you want to go into prison with that same mindset and you still want to do negativity, it's going to give you that back. If you want to change, change can happen to someone anywhere. Change can happen in this parking lot. You understand what I'm saying? If you want it bad enough, you can get it. And I think that was what, what, was, what happened with me, that it was something that I wanted bad enough that I had to do something, that I was reaching for anything just to get that change, to make myself change, to be a better person. A person where, you know, where you won't see prison. You know, because I knew that one day I was going to be here. Even though I had 22 years of life in prison, I knew that one day I was going to be back out here again. That's something that I walk with every single day. I wake up. I go to sleep and I breathe it every day, every day. I walk with that. How I do it, I don't know, man. You know, I, don't, I can't even give you the answer to it. Is there some things that you just can't share, you just, you just don't know. I can't, it can't even put it in words how I do it, but I do it, man. And it's not easy, but I do it, you know? That's how it is.